you're taking a walk in your neighborhood, you're noticing that some of your neighbors are paying for a service where they go along and they're poking holes in the neighbor's yard. And then another neighbor is having the same thing done. This is called core airification. It's a process that is typically done in the Washington area in the fall. One of the questions you might want to ask is, is this something I should be doing to my yard? Should I do it myself? Or maybe should I pay for a company to poke holes in my yard? We're going to take a peek at why you would consider doing this as a homeowner, the benefits of doing this to improve the lawn, your front or your backyard, and we're also going to explore the question of why you may not want to consider doing this for your yard. John, thanks for having us here. Absolutely. John is the greenskeeper. What's the official title of your role? Director of Field Operations. Director of Field Operations. I don't want to diminish uh, what you do here, <laughs> which is amazing, by the way. Uh, but we were talking about the idea of you're in the neighborhood. You're taking a walk around, and your neighbors are having a procedure done on their yard. They're poking holes, and you see these rather ubiquitous pieces of yeah. soil everywhere. Can you explain a little bit about what that is and yeah. why you'd want to do it? Yeah, so at this time of year, fall, great time of year to get out and the work that you're talking about, it's it's known as core aerification yep. or simply just as aerification. Sure. Um, so again, with with us being in kind of that transition, zo transition zone, cool season grass out here, perfect time of year right now to go out, aerate your lawn. There's a lot of benefits with it, mm -hmm. uh, reducing the compaction on, on your lawn, allowing better oxygen exchange, getting sure. some infiltration of rainfall and allowing better access for nutrients for your roots. And after a really hard summer, it's also a benefit actually to poke the holes so that you can plant seed exactly. and get those lawns healthy again after such a harsh growing season. Exactly, and you hear all the time about fall seeding. Yes. And when you go out and aerify, you're creating that more ideal seed bed out there. Yeah. So you go yeah. out, aerify, get it cleaned up, to, uh, put your seed out and you're certainly on your way to recovery from all your your uh, summer struggles summer loss yeah yeah can you speak to a little bit of the difficulty in growing grass in the mid-atlantic dc virginia maryland one of the hardest places in the world to grow turf grass yeah. can you talk a little bit about why it's so hard to grow turf grass and what you would recommend in terms of planting turf grass yeah so we're in what we what's known as a transition zone sure. meaning you can go you can be growing a warm season grass or a cool season grass so we're right in that zone where either or will work it's really all depends on your preference for your for your home lawn sure and a warm season grass being bermuda, bermuda grass, grass zoysia, zoysia grass. Okay. exactly and a cool season grass being kentucky bluegrass tall fescue um, what do you grow here at nats park so we're 100 percent kentucky bluegrass a cool season turf grass. A, cool, a cool season turf grass okay. exactly yeah absolutely yep. and the challenge is being with a cool season turf grass you have to deal with the summer heat exactly you have to deal with the incredible amounts of moisture in the air the threat of disease on your turf grass and yep. there's a lot of issues with that yep. um, for area lawns folks that are homeowners and they're thinking well is this really something i need to pay for should i do it I've heard neighbors mention the idea of peer pressure. Well, all my neighbors are paying yeah. for this. Is this something I should be doing? Right. Could you talk a little bit about perhaps why you would want to do this or why you'd want to invest in doing this yeah. versus just leaving it alone for a year? Yeah, and I think really it comes down to personal preference. You know, okay. what level of pride in your home lawn. If, it, if it's sure. something that you obviously want to go out there and, and excel on and have a nice looking presentable lawn, certainly there's a lot of benefits with this. Something sure. we would certainly encourage to do once, maybe even twice a year, spring and fall. Okay, so uh, you wouldn't want to do this in the middle of the summer. Exactly, yeah, so going back to cool season turf. So when I think of cool season turf, think of grass that thrives anywhere probably in a temperature range of 60 to 80, 85 degrees for a cool season grass. Which we rarely have in the which summer. Which we rarely have in the summertime, which is why you struggle and you see your turf thinning out, maybe even you know losing some of its color and browning okay. out and, and ultimately leaving you know for it to, you know, yeah. kill over. And, uh, yes, exactly. So again, going back into the fall, when you want to revive it all, take advantage of the temperatures, you poke holes, you're relieving that compaction, better water infiltration, better nutrients, mm -hmm. um, just a more ideal, healthier environment for, for seeding. And from a sustainability standpoint, mm -hmm. there are some environmental benefits of core aerification. Absolutely. Poking the holes. You know, we could talk a little bit about how making sure to put the holes in allows for water retention. Exactly. Less, less water you'd have to put down in the yard, yep. less watering you'd have to do. Yep. If we get a rainstorm, you could ultimately reduce the amount of runoff with exactly. fortification as well, yep. correct? Yeah, exactly. And that's what I look at is for home lawns, it's, it's more erosion control too. Just, oh, you know, sure. yeah. infiltration, you've got the holes out there, you're allowing that better infiltration of water to get through. 
reducing you know any type of erosion coming off of your off of your lawn out onto the the streets sure. and down the storm drains and environmentally speaking you always want to make sure your water if you can if you're a homeowner the water is going down and not across exactly. and out and off the property and, al this. and also paying attention to storm team 4's weather ah, yes, to well, not be watering when rain is expected in the forecast perfect example of sustainability exactly. and meteorology coming together exactly yes perfect well one other question here how long does it take a yard if you have this done? And you could do it yourself if you're adventurous and want to rent the, the equipment and yep. the machines for a, a lesser cost, or you could hire a company to do it. Yep. How long typically, if you're a homeowner, would you anticipate recovery where your yard would actually end up looking fine and great and recover from this process? So if you're doing it in an ideal time of year, sure. right, right now, now. Yeah. late September, October, Okay and you're coming out of the summer stress, we got better growing environment, the temperatures are coming down. I would probably say from the time that you perform, perform, the, um, perform the aeration, probably within one to two weeks, you're gonna see recovery out there. Okay. And you think of a home lawn, you know, your height of cut is generally inch and a quarter, inch and a half, so that's gonna mask a lot of it as well. Okay. Perfect. The lower height of cut, you're gonna see more you know, exposure to the holes and maybe some remnants with your cores out there. But I would say generally probably anywhere within one to two weeks. And when you're cutting here, what height do you cut the Kentucky bluegrass here at the park? So we're generally in a range anywhere from seven eighths to an inch and an eighth. Okay. But our sweet spot's rate right about at an inch. So okay. we're at an inch right now. Speaking of summer stress and all that, we're coming out of that out here. Uh, it's been a long baseball season, uh, so we're you know kind of on the end of that. Um, so we're actually entering our time of year too, where we're going to start doing quite a bit of verification out here. Okay. So not only are homeowners yeah. doing this right now. But it's the same thing happening here at Nats Park? Exactly, yeah. For sports field managers, uh, aeration is critical in our operation uh, to get us through the grind of, of an athletic season. So for us, for baseball. Uh, aerifications for us, generally the team goes on the road 12 to 13 times a year. We okay. call those our road trip. That's our maintenance week. Yeah, sure. I would probably say 90% of that time we're doing some form of an aerification out here. So throughout the course of a growing season from March through the end of October, we're probably in the neighborhood of about 10 aerifications uh, in that time frame. Oh, wow. Something a home lawn, you know, homeowner you would not do to their home lawn. Sure. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. For us, we're doing it for consistency, safety, playability, all those things for professional athletes. Well, John, the field looks amazing. Thank it you. really does. An, an incredible amount of hard work through the season to still have something that looks like this is testament to your ability yeah. and your crew's ability. Yeah. So thank you so much Absolutely. for taking the time thank to you. join us. Appreciate it. John Turnauer, the Director of Field Operations here for the Washington Nationals, and a beautiful job here on the yard, and thanks for your information. Absolutely, thank you.